all men. For several years prior to my decision to walk away from a high paying job, I was at the top of my game as a PR professional. I had been a spokesman for the industry for nearly 20 years, and the last seven or so was head of corporate communications at Cigna. But during the last six months of 2007, a couple of things happened that changed my life forever. That year, I had been writing a policy paper that would be used by the health insurance industry to try to convince people that the problem of Americans without health insurance wasn't really a problem at all. I wrote that many, if not most, of the uninsured had chosen to shirk their responsibility to themselves and to their families. It was their problem, not society's. I'm sure you're familiar with this point of view. If you're uninsured, chances are you're a deadbeat. <laughs> well, in July 2007, I visited my parents in East Tennessee, where I grew up. During that trip, I read in the local paper about something called a health care expedition that was being held a few miles across the state line of the Wise County Fairgrounds in southwest Virginia. The story said that thousands of people were expected to travel from as far away as Georgia and Ohio to this three-day event uh, to get care for doctors and nurses and dentists and optometrists who had volunteered their time. So I decided to go take a look. After all, I was in the middle of writing a paper about these people and it was my job to be curious. So I drove up to Wise County early the next morning on US Highway 23, which winds for several miles through the Appalachian Mountains. Folks, that stretch of Highway 23 turned out to be my road to Damascus. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw when I got to the fairgrounds. I know I wouldn't be here with you tonight had I not made that journey. And as it turned out, it was also a spiritual journey for me and again, wanted to change my life. When I got there, the parking lot was jam-packed. Many people were still in cars and trucks. They had slept in those cars and trucks all night. When the fairground gates opened at 6 a.m., the place began to look like a refugee camp in a war zone. Enormous lines of people, many of them soaking wet from the rain that had been falling all morning, stretched out of view. As I walked around, I noticed that some of those lines led to barns and animal stalls where doctors and nurses were treating patients. Many other people were being treated in open side of the tents. Inside, dentists were pulling teeth and filling cavities. Optometrists and ophthalmologists were checking eyes for glaucoma and cataracts. Doctors and nurses were doing mammograms. And surgeons were cutting out skin cancers. Except for curtains that served as makeshift doors on the animal stalls, there was almost no privacy. Remember, folks, this was 21st century America. It certainly didn't feel like it. That day I realized that the folks in those lines were no different from me. They could have been my relatives or my parents' neighbors. I could tell from their faces that they were people with whom I shared cultural roots, but who, for whatever reason, simply hadn't had the good fortune that, to land a high paying job like I had. It was clear to me at that moment that I was having an epiphany. Those people were indeed my neighbors. Even though I was raised in the Christian faith and had been taught that we should love our neighbors, until that day, I not only hadn't loved people who were unsure or treated them as I would hope they would treat me, I hadn't even thought of them as human beings. Until that day, the uninsured to me were just numbers on the Census Bureau spreadsheet and nothing more. But when I came face to face with those people, they were no longer just numbers and they never could be again. I knew immediately that I could not in good conscience continue serving as a mouthpiece for the insurance industry. That's because I understood then and there that I was part of the problem, not them. It became clear to me that the profit session of the industry that I worked for was one of the main reasons why those folks at the fairgrounds had to go to such lengths to get basic medical care. A few days before, I had literally been writing these people off. I had allowed myself to believe the insurance characterization of them, my own characterization of them, as being irresponsible. And I could not have been more wrong. 